Today we're going to be painting this little cockle shell in watercolours. Here's the little shell here. And the colours we're going to be using are ultramarine blue, permanent rose, yellow ochre, lemon yellow and burnt umber. Now in this video I did say I was using raw umber but it's actually burnt umber over here and the permanent rose is the pink that I refer to. So we're just using those five colours and the white of the paper to do everything on this shell today. Here are some other examples of some watercolour shells that I have been doing. So let's get started. In this painting I'm using a blocking put 300 gram paper so that the paper stays nice and stiff and won't cockle when I do the washes on it. So as you can see it's a fairly st stiff paper and it has quite a rough texture on it and I'm using a number six watercolour brush and this interesting looking brush which is called a dagger brush here so it's got quite an interesting tip on it it also makes great grass and flax leaves are the uses for that and I have used a liner brush just to show you that's another brush you can use for fine lines if you don't have one of these, I quite like this one because it holds lots of paint so it doesn't run out in a hurry. And this one's a number zero liner brush. I've done a quick sketch of this shell and I've marked in where I want my whites because it's very easy to get carried away doing my washes and forget where the whites are supposed to be. And there's my shell. I'm looking at the colours in my shell. You know, we've got yellows and orangey yellows and purples. So I'm going to start off with the orangey yellows. And we'll get some burnt sienna. Oh, sorry, some yellow ochre. Some lemon yellow. And I'm going to mix a mixture of the lemon yellow and the yellow ochre. Turn that around so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to wet my shell first. And where I've drawn in where I want my white. I'm going to leave that with no water on it so that the paint won't go into my white areas.
got quite a watery mix because I don't want to start off with the colour too strong. And then I'm just going over those areas where I put the water. I'm looking at my shelf to see where I want to put those colours. And then get a bit more of the yellow ochre. And while the paint's still wet, I'm going to drop that in over the top where I can see it needs a bit more colour. Get my paper towel and soften the edge where the white's going to be. So you can see the difference where I've blotted and where the white is. So if you've got any areas that you want to be really white, try not to paint over those at the beginning stages of the painting. Now this needs to dry before I go ahead and start on the purple. Here, I'm going to use some pink. some ultramarine blue to make my purple. It's quite a bright purple so I'm going to dull it a little bit with the yellow ochre. Now this time I'm not going to wet my paper first it's going to go straight on to the dry paper. And where I see the purple on my shell, that's where I'm putting it. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush. And with just water on my brush, I'm going to soften that edge. some more water on there to get that little transition between the yellow and the purple. And I'm going to leave this line here as a hard edge to help me show the stripes in the shell. Curving my lines up at the edges to help me to find the shape of the shell. And again, I'm going to soften this colour. So going to soften the bottom edge of this one. And I can just see a little bit of that purple on this side. Put a very light 
version of it just here. Watering it down a little more and going to do this little shadowy top bit to just give that some shape. And I don't want these hard edges so again I'm just using a wet brush with no paint on it and smoothing those out. Now when I'm looking at my shell I can see through this highlight here, it does have some colour. So now I'm going to come through on my highlight and put in a little bit of colour. Now this one is a purple as well, but it's very pale. And I may put a little bit of more pink in it to just lighten it up as well. And again, I'm following the shape of the shell and washing my brush and just using clean water because at this stage I just want to get the wash of colours in. I don't want any hard edges. And I'm going to use that same very pale paint, just a few more little lines. If you just look at your shell, you'll notice the more you look, the more little details and subtle colours and shades that you will see that you don't initially always notice. Now I'm going to work on this area of the shell and I want to make that a little bit more orange. So I'm going to mix some red and yellow ochre to make a dull orange or a slightly darker version of yellow ochre really. So you can see colour that I made there. And I'm going to follow a little line on my shell. And then I'm going to come back with my clean water. And just smooth out some of those edges. Now this time I'm not smoothing all of the edges out. I'm leaving some of them to give some definition to the shell. Okay, now I'm going to start putting in some of the darker colours and some of the details. And I'm going to use the same purple but I'm going to make it a lot darker. I'm going to add a little bit of brown in there. I'm just putting more ultramarine blue in and you can see I'm getting a dark purpley grey. And I may change my brush to something now, so I'm going to have a go with this one and see how I go with the lines for that one. So my shell's got ridges or lines that move up this way. 
So that's what I'm going to be showing here. That one went too straight. And a bit dark, but that's okay because a bit of water sorts that out. So I don't need to do every single line. I just need to give the suggestion of it and my brain will fill in the rest. So I'm looking at my shell and this one it's got a funny funny curve on it. So it doesn't actually meet right up the top it comes down around here. So I'm thinking about where that line's going to meet up top of the shell and I'm also putting in a bit more of that down the bottom to define the bottom of the shell It's quite a hard edge there, which I didn't like. So. It's got a bit of this grey colour at the top here, defining the shape. Some very pale grey shadowy lines and the ridges going this way as well. And this side of the shell is a lot darker than the other side. So I can use this colour just darken up that purple as well. And to define that stripe. And the dark purple stripes show lots of little ridges in them. You see that here. There's a mixture of light and dark that shows the little ridges in the shell. So that's what I'm doing here. So instead of just doing a straight line, I'm putting in little flicky bits to show those little ridges. And I'll do that on this one as well. Some of this paint is a bit damp, some of it's dry. So some of the ridges show up a lot and some of them don't. Because it's mixing in with that damp paint then that's fine. side I don't want it to be 
its detail because it's further away from us. So I'm going to mix some of my dark colour into that lighter pink and that will just give me a lighter version of what I was already using. some of that lighter version to help define some more of these stripes on my shell. The brush I can use would be a, a scratch liner or a liner brush. We'll also make fine, fine lines to show little details. There's a broken bit on the shell there. And that'll show up better when I've put the shadow in on the ground. Hope to find some of these lines. We're going this way, but I don't want these hard lines here, so I've just put some water on the brush and then dragging it up so that it just gently fades out. white face. I'm just fading it out a bit. Now I'm looking at my shell and figuring out where I want the lines to go in this way so I'm going to use the same colour. This is a lot drier now. So the lines this way will show up. And again, I don't want that hard sudden stop. So I'll put a bit of water on my brush and pull those lines out and just fade them off so there's a suggestion of them still there some of that really pale colour to just suggest some more of those little stripes. over the edge of the shell there so I'm just smoothing that out and that'll become part of the shadow. Just 
before the paint sets so I don't end up with a hard line. I'm going to put a little orange highlight in here. See anywhere else I'd like an orange highlight. I'm just defining some of that orange that came down here and using the stroke to go round the shell to help show the round shape in the ridge lines in the rounded shell. And I think I want a bit more dense here now and my lemon yellow mix. And I'm going to do the same thing around the shell in the areas that I want that yellow just defining the shape of the shell I'm leaving some of my whites and use a bit of burnt sienna on its own for the edge here I want to darken up that yellow mixture that I just made very subtly just to help define the shape and I think do some more of these paler lines coming up from this purple and I'm imagining now my lines are coming up to this point here as I'm painting them I'm using the paler colour where the highlights are and the darker colour where the dark shadowy areas are. I'm going to make an even darker grey. It's quite a brownie grey this time. And I just want to darken up a bit more of this along here and putting ridge lines back in and defining this little stripe here a bit more that darker colour Now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to do the shadow. So I'm just going to use my heat gun. And it dries that off. And now I'm going to put my shadow for my shell in. So again I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. And my raw umber. Use a little bit of the pink, a 
just so that it is all part of the same colour scheme and fits all together. I'm going to make this mixture more bluey grey than purpley grey to show the shadow. Go back to my number six brush here. And the first thing I'm going to do is decide where my shadows are going. And I'm just going to put clear water around there. And then I'm going to drop in my shadow colour. I'm going to dry off my brush a little bit and just carefully go around the edge there. And I'm going to take all the paint off my brush and using clear water just let that shadow bleed into the clear water there. Now the shadow here I can see is reflecting some of the shell colour. You can see underneath there's a bit of colour showing through the shell and the shadow on the white paper is reflecting some of that orange and colour so what I think I will do is the same method but I'm going to put in a little bit of the orange first and then go over that with the darker colour letting some of the orange show through when the orange is dry. I'm going to allow some of that orange to come into this shadow down here as well. I'm going to quickly dry that off before I do the next bit. I don't want a hard edge on the orange there. So I'm going to do the same method. But I'm looking at where my darkest shadows are showing up on that shell for this bit. And then I'm putting in that same bluey grey mix over the top of the orange so it's like a glaze and it's just showing the orange through and giving that shadow a bit more colour and depth and it's showing the reflected light from the shell onto the paper. Now I want to darken up some of this shadow because it's not quite dark enough. So it makes a bit more of the fresh colour so it'll have less water in it. And where I see the darkest parts, putting in some darker bits of shadow. And if you get too carried away and it's getting too dark, you can always come back and blot a bit, soften any edges that need softening. You can see how the, the brown and the orange is just showing through and making that shadow a little more interesting and I need a darker bit under here I don't like that hard line on that 
show you there. So I've just put some clear water on there and I'm just smoothing that out a little bit. And I think we're done. So there's a little cockle shell. Nice colourful version of it. My painting is always more colourful than the real thing. So have a go at some seashells at your house. See how you go. Now you may be wondering what to do with your little watercolour picture that you've made. One of the things you can do is make an original hand-painted card for friends or family. And this is what I do with a lot of mine. So first of all, just get a piece of board. This is a board weight card from the craft store. And I cut it to the size of the card that I want. And I just mark in where I want to have it folded. And I use an embossing tool to score the line. And the reason you do this is because that way you get a nice smooth fold on your card. And then you just line up the edges and fold it down firmly. And that makes a nice firm fold on there. And it doesn't go all wiggly or weird on you. So that's a good little tip. And the other thing I do is if the card like this one, I've put a coloured border on it because it was a smaller picture and didn't fill the whole card. And what I'll do is I'll look through some different cardboard colours and I'll try them on my card and see which one, which one that I like the look of and which one I want to try. So I have an experiment. And it's really up to personal taste or how I feel on the day. So the, today I decided to do a brown border on this card. make up my cards, I just use double-sided tape to stick them on with. So I'll do the two long edges there, peel off the back, and then I just eyeball it to get it a nice even border around it with the white, and then I'll get my painting, and I'll do the same thing. double-sided cellar shape on the back peel off the edges and then eyeball it again to get the borders fairly even and most important step, sign it. And I'll use my little stamp on the back with my name and my website on the back. And I make my cards to fit a standard card envelope and when I sell them I'll put them in little clear plastic holder for selling in my gallery. So that's one of the things I do with my little watercolour paintings and the other thing I do and I've done with this one. So 
So I've put them on my Redbubble account on different products and on my Zazzle account on different products. So you can check them out there. But that's how you make a little handmade original painted card that you could do with your shell painting as well. So if you've got someone special that you want to have an original card for, this is a really good way to do it. 